Tori Cruz. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Please put your comments below and you can also find me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. Hey everyone, welcome back to another conversation. Today's guest is Shauna Weller. She is Miss Vermont USA 2020. <laughs> welcome Shauna. I'm really excited that you're here today. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to give a brief introduction first of, of Shauna, and she is an import specialist for a global trade department. And I'll let you say the company name, kind of explain a little bit more what that is, Shauna. Um, but she yeah. also works for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And she also has a blog called Uniquely Me, which celebrates confidence um, in women. So I'm really excited that you're here. We have a lot to cover, and I'm super, super excited to hear about your Miss USA experience as well. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. so let's start off in, so where are you at now? Are you still in Vermont? What are you up to these days after Miss USA? Yeah, so I still live in Vermont. I'm um, working on some projects at my work and, you know, just uh, following what COVID has for me, going virtual and looking at some other opportunities too in the, in the fall and uh, looking to go back to school. So yeah, very excited. What kind of opportunities are you, are you diving into? Yeah, so mostly school. So I want to go back and get my uh, associate's degree in liberal, liberal arts to start, and then hopefully a bachelor's degree in international trade and continue my work in the field that I'm already working in. All right, so describe a little bit about what you do in international trade, because that's super unique. None of the girls yeah. that I've interviewed yet have done that. So tell us a little bit more about that. Sounds really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically what I do is I ensure, I, I work for um, an aerospace and technology company called Collins Aerospace, and we create aerospace and um, airplane parts. And we sell them to commercial airlines and all different kinds of aerospace companies. And so I ensure our product comes into the country following government regulations. And so I ensure everything is on required documents for customs. I make sure everything is on there, all the required information, and I make sure that information is correct. Basically, I'm kind of like an auditor, um, but I also look for opportunities to save money for the company too, because there are certain um, exemptions that you can find and ways to save money on customs duties. And so I, I look for those as well and do my part in um, contributing to the company and uh, being a part of something bigger than myself. And it's really incredible. I get to speak with people from all over the world every day and it's an incredible experience and I'm uh, looking forward to what the next few years have for me. Yeah, for sure. So how did you get into that industry? Yeah, so <laughs> a lot of people ask me that question. Originally, I applied as a contractor for a specific project that they wanted somebody to focus on specifically saving the company money. And technically, at the time, I was brand new to, to international trade and I was a little nervous about applying, but my mom encouraged me to apply anyway, just to see what would happen. And I ended up interviewing well and getting the job. And I learned everything through experience and my coworkers taking me under their wing. Um, so I didn't initially know what I was getting myself into fully, <laughs> but it's been a learning process along the way and it's been wonderful. So how long have you been competing in pageants? Do you think that helped you in your interview process? So at the time I wasn't competing when I interviewed, but I competed for Miss Vermont Team USA in 2012. Um, and then unfortunately uh, my late sister, her health uh, plummeted and I was uh, focusing my time on taking care of her and helping to take care of her. Um, so I decided that I wanted to get back into pageantry after she passed and kind of used her as my inspiration to get back into pageantry. And so I went for Miss Vermont USA and ended up walking away with the crown. The very first time? Yes, in the midst of it. Wow. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Would you say you, you walked away with the crown first and then what? Oh, no, I was just saying that I walked away <laughs> for yeah. the first time in the That's midst of it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. You don't hear that very often. Definitely not right. my story. Mine was like, all right, lose, 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 win. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can't relate to the one, the one time winning, but I think that is, that's really cool. You definitely have that spark right. and that, that it factor that a lot of people look for in a title holder then. Yeah. So congratulations on winning Miss Thank Vermont and competing at Miss USA too. It's such a um, incredible experience. And I just kind of want to 
dive into that a little bit because yeah. there's a lot of girls who are listening and a lot of girls who I work with in my coaching programs that are competing in pageants. They keep getting mm. pushed back just like Miss USA was right. um, they're having to be super flexible. And yeah. I just kind of want to ask you, what did you have to do to really embrace the year of competing in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> yeah. So I had to be flexible with virtual events. Um, but honestly, it was an opportunity for me to network because I wasn't going out and doing things all the time. I was able to reach out to people through calling and email and um, getting involved with virtual events. And something else I took away from COVID was time to self-reflect and really understand my why, why I was doing pageantry, why I wanted you know, to pursue Miss USA. And so for any of the girls who might be listening, this is a time to really self-reflect and understand what drives you because that is what gets you to the crown ultimately. And that's what I, that's what I used COVID for along with encouraging other people too. Um, I had a video series called Words of Encouragement that I would post every so often just for my viewers and followers, just to give them a little boost during the pandemic. So it gave me more time to do that as well. I love that. You totally turned a year of absolute chaos and challenges into a year of development and, and networking. And I really think that's a, networking is huge, right? Right. And with COVID, it's such an amazing time where now the world's a little bit more open, thankfully, than you know when you yes. were when you were training. But you girls have had a tough year with appearances and that sort of thing. And I think it just goes to show how amazing of a leader you are and your character yeah. too, of being able to pivot in a time like that and having that experience because there's going to be times in life, right, where you have to pivot, you have to change according to our environments. Um, and just the fact that you have those skills now is an incredible leadership skill that you have. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Well, I kind of want to switch to um, over to your Cystic Fibrosis Foundation that you do and just kind of tell us how you got involved in that and your experience um, with that. Yeah, experience. right. So after the loss of my sister, she had cystic fibrosis. I wanted to stay involved in the community. I wanted to encourage other CF patients and their families because, you know, going through uh, cystic fibrosis, whether you have it or a sibling has it or a family member, member has it you are a part of that battle, whether you are close to them or not, to be honest. And I was very much a part of my sister's battle and I wanted to continue helping others who are battling CF too. And I just wanted to be an encouragement to them and to do it in her honor and just live out her legacy in that way. And so that's how I became involved. And I wanted to turn something uh, very intense and difficult into something good because that's what she always did. You know, if you knew Jana, even though she had these severe physical struggles, she was the most positive and wonderful person you would have ever met. And I knew I'd be honoring her and following her footsteps, footsteps in that way. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah. And so with the foundation, what exactly have you been doing? Have you been putting on like virtual workshops or anything? Yes. Awareness, what kind of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the CF Foundation has a young professionals organization called Tomorrow's Leaders. I'm on the board, and we organize events and fundraisers for CF patients and their families to have some fun, to raise uh, awareness, and to raise funds. And um, they also have a division called um, uh, Cystic Fibrosis uh, Dancers, and they make dance classes, virtual dance classes that are adaptive to CF patients and their families so that they can still get moving, but it's still to their physical challenges. And I was a part of that. And it's been a, a really great journey just being a part of it. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. So if there's anybody listening who wants to get involved in that, maybe they have cystic fibrosis, fibrosis or a family member or friend, where can they go to find more resources? Mm -hmm. CFF.org is the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's website. Also, they they're all over social media, all over Facebook. If you look up the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation on any of the social media platforms, you will most definitely find them. And I believe I have their information on my social media platforms as well. And your social media platform is what? Um, Shauna Weller together, and then Miss VT USA for my title holder account. Perfect. And then Shauna Weller for Facebook. Perfect. Sounds good. So, and you have a blog as well, right? It's called Uniquely Me and yes. it's all about confidence for women. And I am totally on board with that. I love that. That's part of my yeah. mission as well. So tell us a little bit more about your blog and what your you know, purpose is through that. 
Yeah, so Uniquely Me was designed to build confidence specifically in women with mental and physical differences. I have um, another sibling with um, a mental diagnosis and then uh, my late sister, she was also an inspiration for the blog because both of them have and had unique challenges when it came to their confidence for different reasons. They had what I like to call different confidence testers, things that um, made it difficult for them to feel like confident, powerful women. And I realized that there was a need for women who have their own unique set of challenges. I mean, it's challenging already to find confidence, you know, when you don't have those challenges, but when you do, it makes it sometimes even more difficult. And yeah. so I wanted to reach out to women using my blog and showcase women who have found their confidence amidst their challenges that serve as inspiration. So that was kind of the, the point of the blog. Yeah. Wow. That is so you, you have just a beautiful heart. I just have to say oh, thank it. you. And your siblings are so lucky that they have you as a sister too. Thank you. I'm lucky to have them. They're incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a blessing. And yeah. the impact that you're making just through that and being a light for so many people who probably need it the most, right? Like, it, like yeah. you said, everybody needs more confidence. There's always, right. I don't care how confident of a person you are. There's always some aspect of life that oh, you're yeah. always trying to improve on in that department. So That's the fact right. that you're trying to spread more confidence, especially in the mental and physical differences is a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. And I, I love that. So do you have a podcast or anything that you do? Like you do interviews or anything um, uh, no, I don't. I've actually, I've thought about it, but you know, um, I, I'm, I haven't made a, a decision yet, but it's funny you should ask that because I've had people ask me if I have a podcast, am I thinking about doing a podcast? So maybe I will do, Girl, a you can do it. at some point. It'd be so powerful. You know, it's just another outlet for people to hear your voice and just spread more love and light in the world, especially when we need it the most right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. So okay. what, yeah, so there's a little words of encouragement for you. Go do yeah, you thank you. a podcast. It's fun, right? Yeah. It's just another another outlet. Um, so what would you suggest to to any of the girls um, competing this year to really embrace that confidence? Because you do, you know, you talk about confidence all the time or you write about confidence all the time, yeah. um, no matter who it is, you know, mental or right. physical differences, just any any girl listening, what would you recommend to them to really stay on top of their confidence um, when sometimes mm. the world around us can be beating us down? Yeah, so there are a couple of things. First of all, I believe that confidence at the core is actually about caring for other people. When you focus on serving other people, not only does it build their confidence, but it builds your own too. And I think that's the difference between confidence and conceit. I feel conceit is a little bit more focused on yourself, whereas confidence is actually, I mean, you feel amazing about yourself, but when you help others feel amazing about themselves, it's a whole different thing. And also focus on the things you love about yourself. I cannot stress how important that is. We tend to focus a lot on what we could do better in terms of things that we can't change. It's different to evolve as a person, you know, focus on things that are challenges that we have or things we want to improve on. That's different. But when you focus on the things that you love about yourself, it's just as important as self evolution. And so I encourage any girls who are listening to think about what you love about yourself, expound upon that and whatever things you feel you can change about yourself that you want to, and you think will be productive to your self growth, focus on those things as well. And you'll find that you are building more confidence and you will be more confident. Yeah. I really, I really like what you said there about self love too. What's your process as far as really developing, you know, thinking about it is one thing, but right. I'm a big action taker. So what yeah. would be your, like, do you have daily habits that you have in place? Yeah. Morning routine? Yeah. So what does that kind of look like for you as far as creating those, that self-love? Yeah. So I like to journal, but also self-affirmation, speaking it and hearing yourself say it, that for me has played a huge role, finding affirmation within myself. Um, I am a, a woman of faith, so I find my affirmation in God. Um, and so I think self-affirmation is, is huge because when you take what other people have to say about you too much into account, it can actually uh, put you backward. Yeah. And I feel that, you know, especially when you write it out, I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am um, impactful. I am strong. I am powerful. All, when you write it and speak it, there's power in your words. And when you actually put breath and life into your words, ch things change. 
And so that's my process. So I, I speak my affirmations to myself. And like I said, when you encourage other people, especially other women, when you speak encouragement to other women, you don't notice it in the moment, but you're actually building your own self-confidence too. Oh my gosh. It's so true. So true. There's a sticker that I, or a post-it note. I love post-it notes. They're like all mm-hmm. over around yes. my office and my bathroom mirror, everything. And I have just different little sayings. And I just posted one last week, actually on my social media where it was, God didn't give us this day because we needed it. He gave us mm-hmm. this day because somebody needs you. And exactly. I just think that flows together. Exactly what you're saying there, where you do, you gain confidence through building other people up. I never, right. If you, if something happened where you aren't, you know, you're too self, self-absorbed or you leave a situation, you're like, oh my gosh, I just talked about myself the whole time. You don't feel confident walking away from that. Right. You go and you serve others and you put helping others at the forefront, man, you can't lose. You can't lose. Exactly. So I love what you said there. That's, that's really beautiful. So, well, any lasting words that you have as we, as we wrap up here, I love what you said about the confidence and um, I'm just super excited for you about your future and the endeavors that you're taking on and yeah. being a leader in, in these powerful industries. So any last yeah. words? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just go for it. <laughs> Whatever your dream is, just go for it. You know, there were people who told me that when I was preparing for Miss Vermont USA, there were those who were naysayers and who told me that I didn't have what it takes for whatever reason. And I had to ignore those people. And I had to believe in myself and have faith. And whatever that goal is for you, it's not impossible. It may seem impossible, but it really is not. And I mean, I have the sash and crown now to prove that you really can do anything that you put your mind to. Don't let what others say about you hinder you because ultimately you are the one who makes your success. Oh, fire. So good. Just go for it. Just go for it. Well, thank you, Shauna, so much for joining me today. It was so awesome talking to you. Yeah. Best of luck in your future endeavors. And I'm always in your corner. If you ever need anything, I'm always here for you, girl. So congrats. on. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Or thank you for letting me be here. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely, girl. Have an awesome day. You too. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, please follow me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. Until next time, be unstoppable.